Welcome to the meeting of the San Francisco Public Library Commission for March 18th, 2021. The time is 4.30. My name is Margo Schaub and I serve as a Library Commission Affairs Analyst. As an ongoing reminder, due to the COVID-19 health emergency and to protect library commissioners, staff and the public, the San Francisco Public Main Library and the CREP Auditorium are closed. However, members will be participating in the meeting remotely. This precaution is taken pursuant to the statewide stay at home order and all preceding and proceeding local, state and federal orders, declarations and directives. Commissioners will attend the meeting through video conference and participate in the meeting to the same extent as if they were physically present. Public comment will be available for each item on this agenda. Members of the public can observe the meeting using the WebEx system by following the link in the library's event calendar or by calling local 1-415-655-0001 and entering the access code for this specific meeting. The access code for today's meeting is 1-87-487-3535. When connected by phone, members of the public can dial star three to be added to the public comment queue. Individuals joining via WebEx should click the raise hand button in the lower right hand portion of the participant panel in order to be added to the queue. Best practices for all public commenters are to call from a quiet location, speak clearly and slowly, and turn down your television or radio. Each commenter will be allowed three minutes to speak. All commenters will remain on mute until their line is open. Library digital strategist Bill Cole will facilitate this meeting and assist in moderating public comment. Mr. Cole will call upon members of the public by name or by caller number to prompt each attendee who wishes to provide public comment. The chat function built into WebEx will not be monitored by commissioners or presenters and is not intended as a channel for providing comment or feedback to the commission. Commissioners and presenters will not respond to content added to the chat. I will now commence with roll call. Library commissioners in attendance are President Wardell Ghiraduzzi, Vice President Pete Wong, Commissioners Ono, Lee, Maul, Wolf, and Dr. Lopez. Thank you very much, Margo, and welcome to this meeting of the San Francisco Public Library. Um, today is March 18th, 2021. We want to thank all the members of the public who are attending this meeting remotely. If you have not done so, all the materials for this meeting are available for download on the Library Commission page of the library's website, which is sfpl.org. We have a total of five agenda items today, so we are going to begin with item number one on the agenda and open it up for general public comment. Members of the public who wish to provide general public comment should raise should now raise their hands in order to be added to the queue. If you are using the WebEx interface, click the raise hand button in the lower right hand portion of the screen. If you have called into the WebEx dial-in number at 1-415-655-0001, please press star three to line up to speak. Madam Chair, Operations is checking to see if there are any callers in the queue, and they'll let us know if there are callers that are ready. If you've not already done so, please raise your hand in WebEx or press star three to be added to the queue. For those already on hold in the queue, please continue to wait until it is your turn to speak. Madam President, there's presently one commenter in the queue. Thank you, Operations. Uh, please begin allowing general public comment. Caller number eight, your three minutes begins now. Is that me? Yes, that is you. Hello. Thank you. Please start the clock now and not subsequently. This is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. We can be reached at libraryusers2004 at yahoo.com. The past month has been a busy one. We were very concerned last month that your annual, 25th annual, F.E. Lee Morris lecture 
with author Jason Reynolds had no access evident whatsoever for people who don't have a computer, and that would eliminate from the capability of over 100,000 people who don't have Internet access or easy Internet access, in particular, even more than 100,000, well over. And that's according to the city's own report, Data Equity Strategic Plan 2019 to 24. There were some changes made as a result of the inquiries that we began the very next day. One of the things we found was that somebody in charge of the program didn't even know that it was possible to call in to what otherwise would be a just a Zoom meeting. And there were some changes made and a further analysis of that. I appreciate what changes there were made. Certainly, I don't think that they were enough. And I'm very concerned that the library is catering now in major ways, in ways that are excluding people who do not have computer access. They don't have computer access to learn of programs that exist and of new things happening at the library, like another branch is opening and so on for, for curb service and so on. And second of all, when there's a program that you require so-called registration for, they don't know that you can do it. Uh, you can participate by phone. Later on in this meeting, we're going to hear about the current statistics, but I would like to say that sadly missing from the library, and I've tried to get those statistics recently with very limited success and difficulty, um, the statistics that you should be certainly looking at is what are you doing compared with your past performance in prior periods before COVID-19. That's important because you should presumably want to return to that and even exceed that. The problems with uh, curbside service are tremendous. The library used to say at some points, the library delivers democracy. Well, when COVID hit, the library just left town pretty much completely. Now it does provide services for people who are online. But for example, I saw somebody coming to get a library card in person. Sorry, no, it doesn't work. Uh, you want advice in person? Forget it. Go on the minutes. telephone or whatever you want. Thank I you. Thank you very much. Operations. Are there any further co uh, commenters in the queue? Madam President, there's an additional commenter in the queue. Uh, thank you. Would you please put them through for general comment? Caller number 10, your three minutes begins now. Um, yeah, uh, I'm calling because I, I'm wondering whether the library um, b ban, I forgot the word for it, the, the, the truck that comes around, whether that can't be uh, more useful. Now there's a, a box in our lobby with no way of, barely any way of knowing that that is where I guess you return books. I don't know how you, I don't think you can pick up books. I don't see why the library van can't come around once a month and um, allow people to pick up books there uh, because it's difficult to move around the city in order to go to. And uh, in fact, our local library hasn't even been opened as a place to go, so we have to go to the main library, which is without the bus service is um, quite awkward. Um, I put in a plug to put back to number 31 bus. That's not your business, but it's city business. In general, I would like sooner rather than later to have visiting possible into the library. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you. Operations, are there any further commenters in the queue? Madam President, there are no additional commenters at this time. Okay. Hearing that there's no uh, further commenters, general public comment uh, on this item is now closed. Um, we are going to move on to our agenda item number two. Um, which is um, 
F an SFPL to go update. Um, we'll have a presentation um, on our SFPL go um, uh, uh, work um, by the city librarian and the, um, the staff. Then we'll go to general comp public comment and then we'll have a uh, commission uh, discussion after that. Thank you, President Wardell, and good afternoon, commissioners. This past Saturday marked one year since the library was forced to close our doors due to the shelter in place order. This past year has tested library staff in so many ways as they have stretched, adapted, innovated, and risen to the, the occasion to continue meeting the needs of our residents for library services and also responding as disaster service workers. I'm proud of their resilience and commitment to public service and how they've created a new service model that's been carrying us through this pandemic. For this SFPL to go update, I'm pleased to introduce our Chief of Branches, Kathy Del Neo. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, commissioners. As Michael shared, my name is Kathy Del Neo, and I'm the Chief of Branches for San Francisco Public Library. Thank you for this opportunity to provide you with an update about SFPL to go, our hold pickup service. This evening, I'll share some recent service enhancements and our usage data with you. Next slide, please. When we first began providing SFPL to go service to the public, we implemented best practices from other libraries and the retail industry, including pre-checking out items to patrons. Ultimately, the pre-checkout process proved cumbersome for our staff and somewhat confusing for our library patrons. So at the suggestion of the frontline staff, we developed an improved process for checkout and ceased the pre-checkout of materials on February 16th. Checking out materials when folks come to the door of one of our, our SFPL to go service points is working well for staff and is getting positive feedback from the public. Next slide, please. We're also excited to let you know about a new service developed and piloted by our team at the ANZA branch. It's called DVD Grab and Go. This service helps to replace that feeling of serendipitous browsing. Our branch staff select a few DVDs and Blu-rays and group them together in a bag. Patrons can then ask to check out one of those grab and go bags when they pick up their reserved items. So far, the data shows that this new service is a hit. The service was implemented in January and in February, the circulation of DVDs and Blu-rays at ANZA branch increased by 21%. The March numbers continue to be strong. The pilot may expand to include other formats, such as picture books, and additional branches may join the pilot in the coming months. Next slide. We're currently in the process of implementing another service improvement that we expect will please our patrons. A reduction in the amount of time we quarantine returned library materials from 96 hours to 24 hours. This change comes after receiving updated guidance from our trusted colleagues at the Department of Public Health and after having lots of conversation about this possible change with staff in numerous meetings. By April 6th, the hardworking teams at each SFPL to go location will have implemented a 24 hour quarantine period on returned materials. This service improvement should increase the speed at which return materials move along to the next patron, and it will definitely increase the speed at which they get off of a patron's record once they've been returned to the library. Next, next slide, please. As you're aware, since August, we've been steadily increasing the number of branches that provide SFPL to go service. We currently provide the service at 11 branches, plus the main library, and we are pleased to announce that we will launch SFPL to go at the Portola branch on April 6th. The next slides um, that are coming will be looking at some of the measurable outcomes of our SFPL to go service. As you can see on this slide, our SFPL to go sites are spread throughout the city. Blue dots on the map represent SFPL to go service points. Purple dots show Ortega and Visitation Valley branches, two sites where we provide both SFPL to go service and also host a community learning hub. The five red dots on the map reflect our on the go service, our SFPL to go go, which is provided by the library's mobile outreach services team. 
They bring the bookmobiles to sites in the Mission, Ocean View, and Richmond districts and to Treasure Island two or three afternoons a week. As of this morning, we have had 227,676 visits to our SFPL to go locations since we launched back in August. Next slide, please. Now we're going to take a deeper look at our SFPL to go data and focus first on the main library. Daily visitors to the main have remained fairly consistent throughout the holiday season and into the spring. Our main library serves an average of 214 community members every day. Next slide. In this slide, we focus on the branch SFPL to go locations. You can see a rise in usage as we have continued to add locations with each branch represented by a different color on the bar graph. In the aggregate, the 11 branches, the 11 branches offering this service are seeing about 1,376 visitors each day. On peak days, we're getting as many as 2,000 to 2,200 visits. Peak days often correspond with the Tuesdays after our holiday weekends. As you can see, all of our branch sites are seeing a steady stream of visitors. At this time, our busiest branch is the Eureka Valley branch, which sees an average of 201 visitors in its five weekly days of service. So each of those days, it sees 201 visitors a day. Our other busiest locations are Ortega, Merced, Excelsior, and Anza branches. Next slide, please. In this slide, we'll take a quick look at the mobile outreach team's SFPL to go go service data. We're seeing around 165 visitors per day of service across the various SFPL to go go locations in the Mission, OMI, Richmond, and Treasure Island communities. Next slide. While the current public health order does not allow for in person library service inside our buildings, we are developing plans so that we can move quickly and safely to implement inside library services when we have the green light to do so. The library has formed a staff reopening committee, which meets weekly to provide feedback and input into plans to safely reopen our libraries and the participants in that committee are listed on the slide. For those who um, can't see the slide, I'm going to just really quickly read the names. Rebecca Alcalavera Flor, William Alvitez, Shima Avalos, Kathy Cormier, Naima Dean, Eric Hannon, Jamila Hyatt, Naomi Jelks, Bill Kolb, Stephen Lee, Melanie McCallum, Katrin Reimuller, Melissa Ann Reyes, Ian Williams, Luis Zuniga, and Tom Fortin and I are the co chairs. Next slide, please. Each SFPL to go location launch brings us opportunities to reconnect with our community. We are truly bolstered by feedback that we hear from our patrons about the important role the library plays in their lives and by the joy in their faces when our patrons pick up materials. My colleagues and I are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. And commissioners, I would also add that in anticipation of the city moving into the orange tier next week, I wanna to telegraph to all of you that I will return next month to the April Library Commission meeting and we'll be prepared to present a more detailed reopening plan as the health restrictions ease and the list of allow, allowable activities uh, increases. By then, I should have a clearer picture of what level of service uh, will be allowable under future updates to the public health order. Uh, in the interim, we're going to continue to deliver the highest possible level of service that we can with our available staffing capacity. Uh, we still have 23% of the library's workforce deployed as disaster service workers, and those folks were recently extended through the end of April. Uh, so I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. My heart goes out to the earlier uh, public commenters. I know how much our community cherishes and misses their beloved libraries and our staff is anxious to reopen and welcome patrons back for in-person services. Uh, I only ask that people remain patient and understanding as we navigate this gradual reopening process in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you.
Thank you very much. So now what we'd like to do, we're going to go to uh, general uh, to public comment on this agenda item. And so I'm going to go back to operations. Um, operations, are there any um, commenters in the queue? Madam President, there's currently one commenter in the queue. Thank you. Would you put that uh, commenter through? Caller number eight, your Thank three you very minutes much. begins now. This is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. We can be reached at libraryusers2004 at yahoo.com and also by mail at P.O. Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. If this were a live meeting, uh, I wouldn't be giving all of the contact information because anybody could walk up and say, hi, uh, liked what you said, didn't like what you said, agreed with what you said, and so on. Uh, maybe even let's have a cup of coffee. But that's not possible with a remote meeting. With respect to the SFPL to go update, thank you for some statistics. And uh, I did note that in another version of this, the actual numbers of branch circulation figures were in small letters in the graphs, but they're not in the printed version that we received from the Library Commission. So that's a pity that there seem to be different versions. Um, with respect to library SFPL to go update, it is extraordinarily lacking in perspective and in a more comprehensive view of what the library used to provide and has provided versus what it's providing now. The drastically shrunken service. Approximately a third of the locations only are open. Other places with comparable funding have all the locations. There isn't a single evening of service any time after 5.30. We consider evenings after 6. What about working people? What about students? What about people who otherwise are at home during the day or working during the day? They have zero access. The only non-work hour times that, is, that the library is available is on Saturdays for the branches, uh, for most of the branches uh, that are open, and on Sunday for the main library from 12 to 5.30. Um, certainly, and of course, something is better than nothing, but there is so much less than there has been, and so much less than I think could be, including hours, including open days, and so on. Uh, if you go to the library in person, there is no reference service at the main library, for example. You get to shout into a microphone, they shout back, and then you go pick up your books. Uh, books that used to be in a bag now come bare, and you have to ask for a bag. How come? They used to be waiting three, three days. What's the basis for not quarantining? One used to be able to pick something up and have some service sense. What is, you know, if it's in your hand, obviously you can check it out today. There's no service standard provided according to uh, what we have tried to find out, either for checking back in or for borrowing. And there's no computers. There's a whole range of other services. Three minutes. That are on. Thank you. Thank you. Operations, are there any further commenters in the queue? Uh, Madam President, there's an additional comment in the queue. Thank you. Would you put the commenter through? Caller 10, your three minutes begins now. Yes, it's Deitcha Bowler again. Uh, I agree that better service would be desirable, uh, especially considering that the effect of this pandemonium uh, has been to throw people that are in any kind of communication at all with their culture onto computers. And it's a time when the, the availability of books should be uh, paid very close attention to in order that people not be pulled away from the habit of using books and stuck on computer screens. I don't see why the library van can't be available at all its regular positions. Uh, 
if the city can't find other workers to do the rescue work or whatever it is that the social work, uh, whatever it is that the librarians are being used for, uh, it, maybe somebody could work with the Board of Supervisors to get that changed and for us to get our library services back more fully than they are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, operations, are there any uh, more commenters in the queue? Madam President, there is an additional commenter in the queue. Please put the commenter through, please. Marcial, your three minutes begins now. Hi, thank you for taking my comment. Um, what I would like to say is, you know, as a library worker, it's been heartbreaking not to serve our community during this pandemic. However, a number of us have been disaster service workers for almost one year now. And I'd like to thank um, the library for letting us have this opportunity in another way to serve San Francisco. And we are coming back to the library. And I am really impressed with the SFPL to go presentation today. I mean, um, you all have been working with limited staff. I know this, I'm currently a disaster service worker. There's staff going to different locations, working to try to provide the best public service that we can do safely. And I appreciate what the library has done for its workers and for the public to keep people safe. I am happy that we are moving in the right direction and that more locations are opening up. And I think that SFPL to go has been outstanding in what services we could provide at that time. So with Portola opening soon, this is great, another branch. And I would just like to say thank you to everybody that's put a lot of thought into it. And, um, you know, hopefully pretty soon we'll get back to normal. But for now, I want to thank all my colleagues that have been serving the city in another way. Thanks. Thank you. Operations, are there any further commenters in the queue? Madam President, there are no additional commenters at this time. Hearing no further requests for comment, public comment is now closed on this item. So um, let's move on to our uh, third agenda on uh, third item on our agenda. Uh, which Madam President, uh, before we move on to the next agenda item, I believe the commission may want to have some discussion. On oh, this, yes. This item. Yes. I'm so sorry. That's I okay. was going <laughs> Yeah, let's open it up to commission discussion. I knew that. <laughs> um, commissioners, uh, we have a full house here and um, we have an opportunity just to be able to share, comment, ask questions. Um, we have Kathy uh, Deneo, who was the one that provided the SFPL report, and um, Kathy can also provide some more information. So let me get a little over here, and I see some hands up. So I'm just going to go in the order that I see them. I'm going to ask um, Commissioner Ono um, to uh, share first, and then I'm going to go, we'll go to Commissioner Wolf, and then Commissioner Lee, and then we'll, I'll go back and assess after that. Commissioner Ono. I thank you very much for uh, the commission discussion piece. Uh, thank you very much to all of the San Francisco Public Library staff that has been working on SFPL to go, to go go, and also to all of the individuals who have been uh, disaster service workers. Uh, you guys have done an outstanding job. You make everyone proud of everything that you've done, and um, can't wait to see you guys in person one of these days. But I just want to give a shout out to everything um, and all of staff. Um, thank you and continue uh, serving San Francisco so well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Ono. Uh, Commissioner Wolf. Um, thank you. I just want to um, duplicate what Teresa said. I'm just delighted by uh, the comment that uh, one of the members of the staff made. Um, I I think we are so proud of the workers for serving this community during these times of need. And um, I know you can't wait to get back to the library and we can't wait either. As a very proud user of SFPL to go, 
Uh, Kathy, I just want to thank you and the staff. It is run so one wonderfully. And I recognize that we all want more right now. We want everything to be exactly the way it used to be, but we're not there yet. And San Francisco has done a great job of being healthy. And Michael, I, I so appreciate your leadership, making sure that the staff remains healthy and safe. And while we are eager to go peruse the, the um, aisles of books and check things out and talk to librarians and seek their advice, the time will come, and I just ask that we recognize the patience required to keep everybody safe and healthy to get us to that point. So thank you again for the services you are doing and providing this community, and um, let's keep um, um, our stats in the right direction. Thanks. Thank you so much, Commissioner Wolf. Commissioner Lee. I, yes, I echo my fellow commissioner's uh, comment. Uh, I admire the agility. The whole organization was able to attack and be able to address this while meeting the needs. Um, besides that, uh, I am wondering, uh, given the SFPL's uh, numbers, are there attendance number of the programs, so to speak, because people attend the programs uh, shelter in place. So as far as uh, people are using the library functions facilities, I'm just wondering how does that number fare? And, uh, and, and also what the class was, and therefore this is a great learning lesson and God forbid there will be another sort of disaster situation like uh, this pandemic. Uh, it is a, a really cool talk to the uh, library uh, staff, leadership, dedication, agility, flexibility. Can't say more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lee, and thank you all commissioners for the feedback. I believe, Commissioner Lee, you had a question, and I think this gets to what our public commenter was also getting at is how does the current reality compare uh, with our previous operation? And I think it's an unfair comparison. It's it's really comparing apples to oranges because pre-COVID, we had 28 locations all open seven days a week with nights and weekends, very robust hours of operation. And Currently, uh, the library is supporting the operation of 21 facilities with about half of our available workforce on site. Um, you know, if you look at foot traffic, our peak days now, we see about 2,000 visitors across uh, the 12 open sites. And, you know, pre COVID, we had about 16,000 visitors a day across 28 locations. But again, uh, it's comparing apples to oranges when you consider the uh, limited staffing and the reduced hours of operation, reduced days of the week that were uh, open. You know, I would say physical circulation this year is probably on track to be about 15% of what it once was. Uh, which is understandable. You know, people haven't had convenient access by and large to their neighborhood library uh, like they used to. And I think people's behavior has also changed in a global pandemic. And people have, you know, increasingly taken advantage of some of the digital offerings. Um, you know, our, our digital circulation has grown exponentially by 62% this fiscal year. So I do think that we will recover a lot of our patron base and the physical circulation once we reopen in earnest. Um, you know, our, our programming numbers have been a bright spot. You're going to hear a little bit more about that in the city librarians report later. So um, I just wanted to offer that for some context. Thank you so much, Michael, for responding to Commissioner um, our Commissioner's question. I'm going to um, I'll go to now um, Commissioner Mall. Commissioner Mall, do you want to unmute yourself? I don't want to be redundant, um, 
But I just want to echo what my fellow commissioners have said and what also um, Michael Lambert has said. I think that uh, the complaints are completely unjustifiable during this time. And it's not like um, the library staff wouldn't want to be in place and um, behaving as business as usual. This is an unprecedented time, and the library has had to um, uh, go with the flow, so to speak, and do the best that they can. So I think our position as a commission, and I hope as a community, is to support whatever the library staff is doing um, when most of the staff has been redeployed in other areas and built public buildings are not open, even though many people have been vaccinated, we still have a ways to go. So I don't understand really where the pushback comes from. And I think it's really quite unfair. So um, bravo to the, to the SFPL staff. And hopefully in a few months, we'll have a different conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Mall. Um, Commissioner, Dr. Uh, Lopez. Hi. Um, thank you, Catherine, for the report. Um, I do have a question regarding the uh, reopening committee. Could you tell us a little bit more in terms of uh, the selection process uh, and in terms of, you know, who's participating? I, I'm just curious about that. And also, um, let me be more specific, uh, how the, the committee was formed in terms of representing the multiple libraries. Uh, I can tell you that because I'm also in a reopening committee at my institution, <laughs> and I know how challenging and difficult it is. So I want to really commend the people that volunteer to, to do this work. Um, if you can just tell us a little bit more about, like, you know, uh, the selection and also what are some of the the planning um, that that is happening there? Thank you, Dr. Lopez. I will chime in here, but I will also invite my chief of branches to comment and our chief of Maine if he would like to. But I would say the genesis of this reopening committee really dates back to work with our Joint Labor Management Committee. We meet with our labor partners every month. And um, really several months ago, we were working with them on even launching SFPL to go last summer. And uh, the reopening committee, the membership really was formed based on the recommendations of our labor partners, SEIU 1021. Uh, they provided a list of staff that they wanted to be involved, and library management embraced that, uh, you know, wholeheartedly. And we also added some of our team to the mix. So the the committee has uh, management representation from our chief of Maine, Tom Fortin, and also our chief of branches, Kathy Del Neo. I believe our assistant chiefs, uh, Katrin Reimuller, assistant chief of Maine, and Rebecca Alcala Veraflor may also be involved. Uh, but it's been a very collaborative process. We have a, a great relationship with our labor partners, and, and they've been very instrumental in helping us move forward this year. And I look forward to that continued partnership. Kathy, Tom, anything you'd like to add? Michael, I think you covered it. Pretty well, um, I think just a, a couple of comments, things that have happened so far is that we had some subgroup work and folks talked about different services that they'd like to see developed, things that we could do. One of them was the grab and go bags. Um, another one was another group is looking at digital access, restoring some public printing. Um, and that's something that is coming soon we hope um so the group thinks of different ideas um has a lot of different ideas and projects to move forward um 
but then we also bring materials to them. So as reopening plans are formulated, the group will provide feedback on those. Um, the group includes people of all different library classifications and from, from our public service divisions, but also from collections and technical services. Um, it's a very robust conversation and we're meeting weekly right now. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. If I can just add in, this is Tom Fortin, Chief of the Main Library. Um, I think, you know, I tried to ask for staff um, from across the main. So that's where we have a number of different floors involved and people representing the floors at the main library. And then, you know, also, you know, it was partly who's available at the time. A lot of our staff in early October when we, I think it was October when we formed the committee, um, you know, aren't available because of DSW work. Um, so, you know, I'm, I value the participation of the people who are helping out from the different floors at Maine. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just monitoring hands right now. I think those folks with their hands up have already uh, spoken. So um, if there's no further uh, commission discussion, um, we will move on this time for real to our next item which is the city librarians report. Um, this item is going to allow our city librarian to report on recent library, uh, library activities and to make announcements. And so I'll turn it over to city librarian Lambert. Thank you, President Wardell. And I would like to say happy Women's History Month. I have, we have a couple of programming highlights to share this evening, and I'm pleased to introduce our star presenter, Michelle Jeffers is our Chief of Community Programs and Partnerships, and she'll be sharing our One City, One Book and Her Story Women's History Month events presentation. Michelle? Thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. Um, good to see some of you here tonight. Um, first, let me add uh, in response to Commissioner Lee's comment about our programming efforts, just um, to say that I just saw some data today that we were tweeting about as a system that we've had about 500 virtual programs since we closed down that have been attended by about 43,000 people. So just to give you a sense of the numbers, which are, which is, you know, certainly a, sm a smaller number of programs since um, compared to when we were in person but a really robust viewing history of those programs. So I'm really pleased that we are still getting out there to the public. All right, um, let me begin my presentation about One City, One Book and Women's History Month. Um, I'm really pleased to get a chance to talk to you about this. We, as you know, our One City, One Book is Know My Na Name, a memoir by Chanel Miller. We tied it into Women's History Month in March and Sexual Assault Awareness Month in April. So I've kind of combined it into one big um, update for you. This, as you know, is our 16th One City, One Book. Um, and it's really been a terrific book. It's a candid memoir about art, the justice, the justice system, reclaiming one's name and identity, and healing from a sexual assault. Um, as you know, every year we pick a book for this citywide reading initiative. It's the largest literary event of the year for the library, and I'm proud that our commissioners, Connie Wolf and Susan Mall, join us in the selection process to pick this book each year, along with a notable group of writers, booksellers, educators, and librarians. Um, this week, we had um, many folks joined us for our main event, which was the author herself, Chanel Miller, in conversation with journalist Robin Takayama. That was on Tuesday night. We had 1,950 people watching this one-time only live event on Zoom and YouTube. Um, that was certainly quite an increase from the 250 seats that the Corette holds. Uh, and we had attendees literally from around the world. We did a shout out and we had people from Australia and just like so many, so many other countries joining Japan. Um, it was a mind blowing, humbling, brave and beautiful conversation. One of my favorite quotes um, that was shared by attendees really was Chanel saying, you can talk about dark things in colorful ways. That is what art does. She is an artist as well as an author, I hope, as you probably know. Um, I've never seen so much love for a One City, One Book program in my time here at the library. And the other nice thing about this event was we were able to offer it 
on Zoom in uh, translated into Spanish, Cantonese, and also closed captioned. Slide two, please. Uh, one City, One Book always gives us a chance to work with our community, and this year was certainly no different. We made some wonderful new partnerships that went along with the themes of the book. So those partners included groups like San Francisco Women Against Rape, the Human Rights Commission's Office of SHARP, and SHARP stands for uh, Sexual, Has Sexual Harassment and Assault Response and Prevention, the Department on the Status of Women, Chronicle Books, the Asian Art Museum, which is also hosting an exhibit of Chanel's work, uh, the McAvoy Foundation for the Arts, KQED, SF Arts Monthly, Litquake, and of course, the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library. We couldn't do uh, One City, One Book without them. This has been a Friends initiative from the very first uh, year that it started. Slide three. Um, we also made some really strong school partnerships this year. We provided copies of the book to the students of Mission and Balboa High School and City College of San Francisco. Mission and Balboa High School had a joint uh, student-led event, a conversation with Chanel, with the Youth Outreach Workers Group from Mission and Empower Her Feminist Group from Balboa High. We had 90 students attend that talk. And then um, tonight, actually, uh, just right, right as we're speaking, uh, City College of San Francisco and USF are, are having a conversation with Chanel, with uh, Dulce Garcia, the director of SHARP. So that's happening as we speak and is why Anissa is not here doing this presentation for you instead of me. Um, slide four. Uh, we've had, uh, as I mentioned, tremendous social media about this event and all of our events related to One City, One Book and Women's History Month. We've had an art giveaway. Chanel designed a poster for us that we've been giving away at our SFPL to go sites. Every Sunday in March and April, we launched a Chanel Miller quote across all of our social media platforms. During April, we will also do a social media campaign highlighting San Francisco and Bay Area sexual assault, rape, and domestic violence organizations and resources. Um, and we're tracking all the data that we're getting from our social and media relations efforts so we can improve our reach for One City, One Book. Next slide, please. Our key related programming for One City, One Book is called Know Your Name. And it's a series created around, created around the topics explored in Chanel Miller's book, including survivor resources, gender and system oppression, activism and healing through art, writing and movement. Um, so it's easy to know to join us every Monday in March and April for a different kind of program. I've tried to highlight a few of them here, but I hope you get to tune in to some of them coming up in April. Next slide. Uh, in March, again, our programs are tied to Women's History Month. So on March 4th, one of our bigger ones was an online conversation with Celeste Marie Bernier, Judith Butler, and Isaac Julian in partnership with the McAvoy Foundation for the Arts that explored the impact of the women in Frederick Douglass's life on current pursuits of justice. But still to come is a panel discussion with the Guerrilla Girls, The Art of Behaving Badly on March 24th. Um, that's in celebration of their new their new book. And the speakers are Frida Kahlo and Kathy Kolwitz, which is the pen names that the Gorilla Girls go by. Um, so I hope you can join us. And then we also have Feel What I Felt. Um, this group of women cultural creators will get, we'll gather to discuss Chanel Miller's book, Art and Creating. And we'll feature Cece Carpio, Diana Gameros, Amara Tabor Smith, and Ellen Sebastian Chang. And that's coming up on March 28th. Next slide, please. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I from the past slide. I should have mentioned that also coming up in April for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, our programs um, including homelessness and sexual violence, healthy sexual relationships with Dr. Carol Green of Good Vibrations, and a virtual healing circle for survivors of childhood sexual assault. Sorry, now I've caught up to the slides that I'm talking about. Now we're on slide seven for youth. We're offering a number of Her Story Women's History Month programs, including art workshops with Karen Luck and Alejandra Ramirez. We had a wonderful presentation with Career Girls. Um, it's an organization for youth that brings um, successful career women in front of uh, young women to talk about their past to success. And then next week, we have a presentation in partnership with the Presidio Trust, where we feature the all women crew who have led the design and construction of the Presidio Tunnel Tops project. That's the massive public uh, undertaking that will revamp the Northwest corner of the city at the Presidio. Next slide, please. 
And we've also brought in a number of authors and poets for our youth audience, which included um, on March 9th, we had the sister writer duo, Maika and Maritza Mulit, the authors of Dear Haiti, Love Aileen, and One of the Good Ones, who shared their perspectives on writing, allyship, and the power of sisterhood. On March 10th, we partnered with SFUSD, which helped us to bring in New York Times bestselling author Elizabeth Acevedo and author, organizer, activist, educator Mahogany Brown for a conversation about social justice and equality on the heels of Acevedo's collaboration on Brown's recent book, Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice. And then last night, we had the San Francisco poet laureate Tongo Eisen Martin, who was in conversation again with Mahogany L. Brown and um, Sudanese, by way of Washington, D.C., poet Safia Alio. Um, she's the author of The January Children, which re received the Sillerman uh, First Book Prize for African Poets. Um, so that was a wonderful reading and conversation last night. Um, and that concludes our Women's History First Story and One City, One Book presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And that concludes the City Librarian's Report. Thank you so much. So great. So we're going to go to our public right now. And um, we're going to have a, a public comment on this specific um, item. Operations, um, are there any commenters in the queue? Uh, Madam President, there are commenters in the queue. Great. Would you put the first commenter through? Caller number eight, your three minutes begins now. Did you say something that starts? Go ahead, yes. Peter. Okay, can you start the clock, please? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. We can be reached at libraryusers2004 at yahoo.com and also by mail at P.O. Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 9411 7-0544. Um, thank you for the reports, as usual. Uh, these reports are always interesting and informative. And if we have criticisms, it's that we'd like the word to spread more widely and, frankly, more equitably. Uh, one of the reasons that I ask for prior year comparisons is not just for the fun of it, but because prior years might give a clue as to what's missing and where the library might want to be headed. The library slogan of free and equal access is not being in the same way carried out, in fact, differentially carried out. Not free, not equal. So when we have programs that are at a location, anybody can walk in, boom. No prerequisites of equipment, cost, or anything else. When you have a program that's only visible as a remote program accessible by computer only, and you have to sign in for it and have to have an email for it, now there's a gigantic barrier to access of cost, of equipment, of understanding how it works, and so on. And I've already quoted to you from reports, there are 100 plus thousand people in the city who are completely excluded. So while it's nice to have more people, this is a library for and paid for by the city. And to just simply cut out, to clank down the door on people who don't have access to the internet is wrong. I was actually glad to hear something that Kathy Del Neo said. She talked about figuring out something to do with printing. Well, yes, that's one of the functions the library performs and has for its uh, users that is gone when the place is closed. And yes, that's a constituency that maybe ought to be thought about as well as the folks that have computer use at the library and so on and so forth. With respect to the herstory, sounds like a great program. I spoke to the person in charge of marketing and publicity just before and asked, is there any publicity that indicates a person can participate by phone? And is there any way that it's shown how to do that? And she was not able to give me anything specific and said, well, she wanted to give me a more thorough answer. That's what I'm talking about, free and equal access. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Um, operations, would you put the next commenter th through, please? Naima, your three minutes begins now. Oh, I can't unmute. You're unmuted. We can hear oh, you now. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> I, you, I was looking for the little pop-up. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, a number of things that I could comment on right now, but in three minutes, I'll try and do my best to be as concise as possible. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that as a person who works at the library, and who serves on the reopening committee and has served in this city in many capacities over the past year. Um, this week, for the first time, I had a moment in my life to stop and actually enjoy a couple of the programming programs that were presented, uh, both the Chanel Miller program, which was amazing. Um, what an amazing human being that we got to witness. I would not have been able to see her if it, would, if it had been incorrect based on my hours that I work. Um, I also was able to witness the presentation yesterday with the new poet laureate and these amazing women and their poetry, which I am not a poetry connoisseur. After yesterday, I have um, taken a bite and I might try some more. Um, I do want to say that in relation to the programming and the virtual programming, I am a strong supporter of equitable services and reaching out to the public, being a Black woman that does this for my life work. Um, I also look at this time that we are in that people say is unprecedented, and I look at it as an opportunity for us to improve and to make change and not to necessarily look back, but to break away from the systems we're accustomed to um, utilizing and perhaps look at new systems. And for me, I'm thankful that we are able to give programming to our public. It's my favorite thing to do. I'm thankful that we have virtual programming available. And I like it especially because I find that it is allowing us to care for our staff and pr protect the health and well-being and mental wellness and emotional wellness, as well as reevaluate the services that we will provide when we reopen wholeheartedly and full of love. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, operations, would you put the next commenter through? Caller number 10, your three minutes begins now. Yes, it's Stacey Buller again. I was very interested to learn uh, a lot of things now from uh, e uh, your comments about working with the labor union, because I wondered what they might have had to say about reassignment of personnel. Uh, in general, uh, uh, based on what I, I, I know from that now, uh, I, I'm left wondering, I don't even know what a grab-and-go bag is. I've used, you know, I've gone to pick up books. I don't know why I have not found out about that. I want to repeat that I think the library van to all its places should be uh, working, and I don't understand uh, why not. Uh, and as for all these, uh, I've watched some of the virtual programs. Uh, you know, our time has become a commodity uh, this past year. It's changed its nature. And um, uh, things are, are piling up on top of each other, and it is difficult to witness all the virtual programs that one might want to. And I should think it's particularly appropriate for a library to be making recordings of that and make the programs available after their initial uh, presentation. And I hope that they will be doing 
a lot of that in the future. And still in all, it is of great concern to me that there are so many people, according to Mr. Warfield, 100,000 in our city. Isn't that, uh, isn't that a tenth of our population? If it's 800,000, I think it used to be, who have no access to computers. Uh, I wonder what the homeless people do in case they might want to borrow a book. I don't see how they can. Um, so I guess that concludes my remarks. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Operations, are there any uh, more commenters in the queue? Madam President, at this time, there are no additional commenters. Thank you. Hearing no further requests for comment, public comment is now closed. So we're going to go to our commission discussion. Um, on the city librarian's report, uh, my fellow uh, commissioners, um, you can go ahead and get yourself queued up now by raising your hand. Um, if you have any questions, comments to make on the city librarian's report. So I am just monitoring uh, to see if there's any raised hands uh, from the commission on the city librarian's report. Well, the event um, was wonderful uh, with Chanel Miller, um, a pretty phenomenal, um, phenomenal artist as well as young person. Um, so grateful to have that quality of 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 engagement um, that's open um, to all. So thank you very much. I want to say thank you to Michelle Jeffers and um, all of Michelle's team, including the public relations people that worked really hard to make sure that that um, event went off well. They worked on that for months and months. And so sometimes we have one evening and that one evening took a lot of time to bring it all together. So thank you so much, Michelle. So I don't see any other, um, um, I don't see any hands up for from the commissioner. So we are going to uh, bring uh, the city librarian's report um, to a close on that agenda item. And we're gonna move on to the fourth uh, item, uh, which is the approval of minutes from February uh, 4th, 2021. And this is both uh, requires public comment as well as action on behalf of the commission. So at this time, I'd like to call our uh, general public comment on uh, this agenda item. Madam President, there is one commenter in the queue. Thank you, operations. Would you put the commenter through? Caller number eight, your Thank three you. minutes begins This is now. Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. You can reach us at libraryusers2004 at yahoo.com and also by mail at P.O. Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117. I must say that the timing of these things is most unfortunate and not very reasonable. If somebody asks you whether you can hear them, you ought to be able to answer and then let them speak on making public comment and not have to deduct the time for them to have the burden of trying to straighten out a very confusing and a very confused uh, mechanism that you have set up to replace the usual mechanism, uh, including, by the way, the fact that you used to have a nonstop timer in people's uh, view so that they could at any point tell where they were. I've asked in the past for, will you give me a 30-second warning, as they do in other places, or as they're willing to do, and simply got no answer. Well, when do I find out there's no answer, and when do I have to just keep talking with no answer as opposed to we won't comment on that, which is the reasonable and the decent thing to do and way to treat the public. With respect to the minutes, they seem to have become greatly shortened um, and to basically rely on extreme basics 
to describe what the public has said. Uh, in public comment on item number two, our public comment is quoted, is written as saying, Peter Warfield, Executive Director, Library Users Association, and so on, said, said in he had trouble with the technology joining the meeting. He commented that the library should consider the needs of people who don't have access to computers and the internet and how the lack of access to the library and library services impacts them. Well, I didn't just, in my comments ever about any of this, say that it's a neutral thing, gee, maybe it ought to be studied. I've been very clear every single time that it grossly and unfairly and un equally and differentially affects certain people. The most vulnerable is one way to describe it. The poorer, minorities, older people, very clearly, and that's stated very clearly in the report that I keep quoting to you, the City of and County of San Francisco Data Equity Strategic Plan 2019 to 24. Uh, it isn't a matter of me having trouble with the technology, although I certainly sometimes do, but that a lot of people might have trouble for specific reasons. Um, that's just one example of the abbreviation that I think drains meaning from these minutes, and you should work to fix the minutes to make them more understandable. Thank you. Three minutes. Thank you. Um, operations, are there further um, commenters in the queue? Madam President, there are no additional commenters at this time. Okay, seeing that there's no further commenters, uh, public comment is closed. And so, um, um, is there a commissioner that would like to make a motion? Um, this is Commissioner Wolf. I'll make a motion to approve the February 2021 meeting minutes. Thank you, I'll Commissioner second. Wolf. I'll second. Who is that? Susan. And Commissioner uh, Wolf has uh, made a motion to approve the minutes, and Commissioner Mall has uh, made a second. I'm going to do roll call for the remaining um, commissioners. Um, um, Commissioner, uh, and when I call your name, say um, aye or nay. Uh, Commissioner Huang. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Ono. Aye. And Commissioner Lopez. Aye. And I'll register my own vote is an aye, and the motion passes unanimously. So we are now going to go on to the final item of our agenda, which is adjournment. Um, we have adjournment in the memory of Lawrence uh, Ferling Ferlinghetti, um, San Francisco uh, Poet Laureate, um, as well as Rosalind. Ku, uh, a philanthropist, um, and I'm going to turn it uh, over to our city librarian um, uh, before we go into our final public comment of the evening. Thank you, President Wardell. I appreciate this opportunity to pay tribute this evening to two extraordinary individuals. San Francisco lost a literary giant on February 22nd. Lawrence Ferlinghetti, of course, was a poet who co-founded and owned the local City Lights bookstore in San Francisco and championed beats, beat poets, including Allen Ginsberg. Ferlinghetti became an icon in the 50s when he went on trial for obscenity charges surrounding Allen Ginsberg's Howl. Howl was a classic of the era that pushed boundaries with its profanity and graphic descriptions of gay sex. Through City Lights, he published works by other iconic beat writers, including Jack Kerouac, Charles Bukowski, and Norman Mailer. Ferlinghetti's 1958 collection of poetry, A Coney Island of the Mind, is considered another pillar of beat generation literature. And he continued publishing collections of poetry and novels through the subsequent decades. He was named the first Poet Laureate of San Francisco in 1998. His most recent publication was an autobiographical novel published in 2019 entitled Little Boy. 
I also want to highlight another individual who's had a considerable impact on our local community. The New York Times obituary describes Rosalind Koo as a scion of a wealthy Shanghai family who helped older people in California and organized a program to educate girls in rural China. Ms. Ku had led a successful career as the CFO and a partner of MBT Associates, a large architectural firm based in San Francisco. Uh, in 1988, she retired at age 62 to devote herself to good works. She was a force behind the 70-unit Lady Shaw Senior Center, serving Chinatown and North Beach which faced considerable community opposition and took seven years to build. She also oversaw and helped fund the expansion of the Chinatown branch of the, San, of the San Francisco Public Library. And I'm sure she would have been excited to learn about our current major renovation project that we aspire for that location. Rosalind Koo passed away on January 30th. So I thank you for your consideration of taking action this evening to adjourn the meeting in memory of Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Rosalind Koo. Thank you so much, uh, City Librarian Lambert. Um, so at this point, um, we are going to go to our final uh, public comment. Operations, are there any commenters in the queue? Madam President, there's, there's a commenter in the queue. Thank you. Would you put the commenter through? Caller number 10, your three minutes starts now. Yes, it's Teacher Bowler again. Um, I would like to, I don't, this may be way out of line, but I would like to respectfully suggest that the commission consider adjournment next month in memory of Paul Robeson whose birthday is on April the 9th, uh, 1898. Uh, I would be glad to provide a synopsis of his many accomplishments and acts to be respected by us knowing about his life. Uh, I, I will submit that to the city librarian, Lambert. Uh, I hope that it's not too far out of line for me to have made such a comment. Uh, but uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, for your comment. Operations, are there any further commenters in the queue? Madam President, there, there is an additional commenter. Thank you. Put the commenter through, please. Caller 8, your three minutes begins now. Good evening again, Library Commissioners. This is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. We can be reached at libraryusers2004 at yahoo.com and by mail at PO Box 170544. San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. I have two parts to my comment, the first one being the usual urging of you not to adjourn until you insist that in future meetings you have at the end or somewhere future items that you want to talk about or take action on in your agenda. Uh, with respect to the in honor of, certainly we support adjourning in memory of, in honor of the, the two people that you have mentioned. There was a quite, uh, uh, let me say that I looked up Howell in the catalog by Allen Ginsberg, which was the famous poetry book, poetry title that was published by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And uh, sorry to say that uh, it's number six and seven in book form the other forms of the library uh, holding um, are not really the uh, thing. The, the number five is Howell, a graphic novel, and so on and so forth, variations and electronic versions and so on. Um, above all, Lawrence Frillinghetti and his City Lights books, uh, he was 
a book person, a book publisher, and a book author. Uh, there's a, some charming details in the uh, New York Times uh, obituary. Mm -hmm. uh, he shared the Beats' taste for political agitation, poems like, quote, tentative description of a dinner to promote the impeachment of President Eisenhower, unquote, established him as an unapologetic proponent of, as the title of one of his books put it, poetry as insurgent art. He never lost his zeal for provocation. You're supposed to get more conservative the older you get, he told the San Francisco Chronicle in 1977. I seem to be getting just the opposite. So I wrote a poem in honor of Lawrence Ferlinghetti for this occasion. Uh, my poem is called Poem Written Posthumously by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I died. Let's not let the library die too. Thank you. Thank you. Really creative. Is there any further commenters in the queue? Madam President, there are no additional commenters. Okay, so our uh, public comment has come to a close for the evening. So um, uh, in honor of uh, just two really wonderful um, San Franciscans that have really contributed greatly, not only to this community, but the world, their influence went on through the world. We are going to adjourn in honor of Lawrence Ferlinghetti as well as Rosalind Koo. Um, do I have a commissioner um, motion to adjourn? I move. And that is? Commissioner Lopez. Thank you. I move that we had moved to adjournment. Thank you so much. And we have a motion by Commissioner uh, Lopez to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. Charlie okay, second. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, Commissioner Lee that have seconded. I'm going to call the rest of you uh, by roll call. Um, and uh, when I call your name, say aye or no. Um, Commissioner Wong? Aye. Commissioner Maul? Aye. Commissioner Ono? Aye. And Commissioner Wolf? Aye. And I'll register myself, uh, Commissioner Wardell, um, to, uh, aye to um, adjourn this meeting. So we, unanimously, we have agreed to adjourn this meeting. I don't have my uh, little gavel that I used to have, but I'll just do a little knock right here that this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for the public that has stayed here with us for this evening. And we look forward to seeing you at our next, the next meeting of the San Francisco Public Library Commission. <laughs>